Well, thank you all so much for joining me. I'm really happy you took the time out of your busy schedules to come and learn a little bit about USA Learns. And today, specifically, I'll be talking about our free ESL and citizenship courses, which are all found at usalearns.org. Um, as Melinda mentioned, my name is Andrea Willis. I work at the Sacramento County Office of Education and I'm the director of a little technical development team called Internet and Media Services. And I have a very rewarding job here in that I get to manage the development of some really wonderful um, online tools that help adult learners across the state, the nation, and actually the world. And I love that. It's very rewarding. So anyway, let's go ahead. And I'm, today I'm going to be giving you a tour. Uh, I'm going to be starting off with a little overview of USA Learns, and I'll give you a tour of our citizenship course and of our ESL courses. I'll share with you some highlights about the teacher side. I'll answer for you some of the questions that we get rather often from folks. And um, as I'm showing this to you, I would like you to think a little bit about how might you use USA Learns at a distance, because I think it's a great tool. I think it could work really well at a distance for you. Um, and it's all free, so what's better than free, right? Okay, so I believe we have a polling tool, right, Melinda? Yes, we do. And so I have a question for you. I'm curious, have you ever used USA Learns? And the answer, the choices are yes or no. Oh, wow, you guys are quick. That's really fun to see those numbers coming in. Ooh, a lot of no's. Fair number of yeses, too. Yay, okay. Hey, very nice. We're getting there. All right, so this will be fun. I'll get to share some information with some folks who have not used it at all. And maybe for those of you who have used it a bit, maybe I'm hoping you'll learn something new today, too. All right. So do I need to close this, Melinda, or do you do that? I have closed it on our end. <laughs> okay, there we go. I've just closed it on my end, too. How wonderful. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit of background um, about USA Learn. So it was originally funded by a grant that my office got with the Federal Office of, of Vocational and Adult Education. And basically, the, pur the purpose of the grant was to figure out if adults could learn online. And spoiler alert, after all these years of doing this, I think the answer is yes. So USA Learns originally launched in 2008. And at the end of the grant, the federal government gave the Sacramento County Office of Education ownership of the site. And I'm so happy they did because it's really been a labor of love for us um, to keep it up and alive. And we've been able to upgrade it several times. And we've even had the opportunity to add um, several new courses. And I'm very happy to share with you that it has it will always be free until I'm around, and I think it always will be free. <laughs> okay, so um, since the site launched, we've had 1.8 billion, with a B, web pages viewed, which is really quite a lot, if you ask me. We've had 13 million website users, and when folks come to the site, they stay quite a long time. On average, they're there for about 24 minutes, which is a really long time in website time, which is kind of like dog years, because usually when people come to a site, they stay for just, you know, a minute or something, and they're out of here. They're gone. And USA Learns has been accessed by every country in the world. Okay. So um, as you can imagine, the border states are really the top users of USA Learns. Florida, California, Texas, New York, Massachusetts are the biggies. And some of our top cities are Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Jose, Sacramento. And you can see the list there. Stockton, Fremont, Fresno, Oakland, and Sunnyvale. Um, you just might see your city there. And if you don't see it there, I bet some people from your area are using it anyway. Um, one thing I like to share with people is that USA Learns was featured in a big report that was um, done by a group called um, Titan Partners a few years ago. It's called Learning for Life, the Opportunity for Technology to Transform Adult Education. And when I saw this report, I was so excited to see that little old USA Learns, which was created by the Sacramento County Office of Ed and is free, is located right in the middle of the results that show um, usage versus familiarity of specific products. And USA Learns is featured here showing that lots and lots of adult educators are using it and lots and lots of folks are familiar with it. And we're right there next to McGraw-Hill and Quizlet and some other 
biggies. Okay, and during the study, they surveyed a thousand adult educators. And um, as you can guess, one thing people really liked about it was the low cost, actually free aspect of the site. Okay, so let me tell you just a few basics. So there are two sides of USA Learns. One is the student side and one is the teacher side. So at usalearns.org, that's where the learners go, okay? And teachers go to a slightly different URL. They go to usalearns.org slash teacher. And when you go, so this is where you would go, right? You wanna make sure when you're going, that's where actually you go. <laughs> okay. Another little bit of overview info is that we have four English as a second language courses. The first one is called the first English course, as you can see here. It's, it's our beginner course. It's considered low beginning to high beginning ESL. We've got 20 video based units with 192 lessons and more than 600 activities. And then we have English One Plus. This is our newest course. It's considered beginning high, intermediate low. And it's based on the Voice of America's Let's Learn English videos. And with this one, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but um, Anna Mateo is this very fun character who moves to Washington, D.C. and gets a job and meets friends and does all kinds of fun and silly things. Um, they've got, we've got five units and six lessons in that course. The next course is second English course. It's considered um, intermediate or low intermediate to high intermediate. ESL, 20 video-based units with job and life skill lessons, 141 lessons, more than 800 activities. Okay, practice English and reading is considered intermediate level. It includes real news stories and activities, and it builds vocabulary, speaking, and comprehension skills. All right, and then we also have our USA Learns citizenship course, which is intermediate level. And um, it prepares learners for all aspects of the naturalization interview. And from what folks in the field are telling me, that is what makes it so special. Um, it covers topics such as getting legal help, steps to becoming a citizen, avoiding fraud, preparing for the N-400 application questions during the naturalization interview. Also, some great lessons on US history and government, and of course, we cover the speaking, reading, writing, and small talk, and other things too. And so far, about 200,000 learners have completed 2 million activities since this new course launched. So let's talk a little bit more about the citizenship course while we're on the topic. Okay. Um, this course has very high quality content, and I'm very proud of it. Um, it was developed in partnership with expert ESL and citizenship teachers. We also worked very closely with immigration attorneys at the Immigrant Legal Resource Center and the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services Program Specialists, both in Washington, D.C. and in Sacramento. All of those people were just absolutely amazing. Um, this course utilizes high quality resources that align with the USCIS adult education, citizenship, education, content standards, and foundation skills. Whew, that's a mouthful. And we use USA Learns best practices. And when I say that we use USA Learns best practices, I mean that when you've had more than 13 million people come to your website, you know where they get stuck. You know after you know, answering many tech support questions over the years, what's easy for folks and where they get confused. So we've utilized all those best practices in this new course. Okay, so I realize some of probably ESL teachers by background and some of you are citizenship teachers. Um, so for those of you who don't have a lot of familiarity with the naturalization interview, I thought I would just take a moment to tell you, you know, in a nutshell what happens during that interview. So let's imagine for a moment that you're an immigrant to the United States and you want to be a citizen. So you will have completed this form called the N-400 application for naturalization. And it's a very long form. It's about 20 pages and it asks very difficult questions about your background, your family, your work, your travel, illegal activities, all kinds of questions like that. And the vocabulary in that application is very challenging. Um, I always think that maybe uh, the IRS had something to do with creating that form, honestly. It's very complicated. 
And so let's imagine it's the day of your interview. You have arrived there to the USCIS office and you're sitting across the desk from the officer and the officer is going to ask you various questions. So the first thing that will happen, or in some sequence, it doesn't really matter the order, you will be asked some questions about your N-400 application. And um, they're basically trying to figure out, are you eligible for citizenship? Are you telling the truth? Do your answers match the ones you wrote on the N-400? Are there errors in your N-400 application? Are there changes such as a new address that they should be aware of? Um, they will also ask you some questions about U.S. history and civics test. Um, Ten questions from the list of 100 questions. I'm going to guess many of you have seen those lovely red flashcards um, that USCIS puts out. So we have um, created some online multimedia activities that teach those questions and answers. Then there's also a reading and writing test. And folks need to be able to read one sentence out loud and write one sentence in English. And they get three chances to read and three chances to write. And when they write, they actually have to write on a tablet nowadays. It used to be a paper and pencil kind of thing, but now it's a tablet. And they also need, um, the, the officer is also listening to see, hmm, to how does this person speak English? And that includes small talk that happened, which actually starts in the uh, reception area when they, um, the applicant and um, the officer meet, you know, oh, how is the weather? Did you find somewhere to park? Those kinds of things. Okay, so that's just a little bit about the interview to kind of set the stage. And Andrea, we have yeah. a, um, a question and you yes. might be answering this uh, in the future, but... That's fine, ask away. What's the average time that students need to complete the USA Learn Citizenship? You know, that's a good question. Um, I am, I can't give you really an official answer. I would I, I think some teachers have told me that about three hours per unit, um, I think that would be a reasonable guesstimate. But it's self-paced, is it not? It is very self-paced, yes. You know, and it's going to depend, too, on the, the learner's um, English level, right? If their English is really great, they're going to go through it more quickly than someone who's struggling a bit more. Okay, so um, some praise from the experts. I don't know if Jennifer Galliardi is with us on the line, but I always love sharing this slide. It's a really lovely quote that I got from Jennifer early on, and she said, I'm not aware of another free resource that is this in-depth and prepares applicants for all aspects of the naturalization interview. And um, I just love that. So thank you, Jennifer, for that great quote. Okay, so it's time for a little tour of the learner site of USA Learns. We're going to start with the citizenship course since we were just talking about that and then we'll take a peek at the ESL courses. Okay, so here I am on the home page of USA Learns. This is in fact where your learners would go and if this is the first time your learner is coming here, they're going to want to click on this big red start now button and complete the registration form and really all we ask for is first name, last name, email address, and a password. I've been here about a million times, so I would click the sign in button. And in fact, I've already done that because I didn't want you to watch me fumbling around typing my password in wrong. So here I am on the student my home page. And you'll notice we've got our various courses listed here. Um, and so I am going to show you the citizenship course. Okay, so we have four units, um, steps to becoming a U.S. citizen, the N-400 interview practice, civics, reading and writing practice, and your interview and new citizenship. So let's just take a little tour. Steps to becoming a U.S. citizen. Okay, we have three lessons in this one. The first is become a U.S. citizen followed by first steps, and then be prepared. So let's just take a little peek here. Okay. Become a U.S. citizen. And while we're, while we're on this page, I'll show you. So see this right here. Um, we've got the same thing here. We've got these columns here that show the status, the completion status. Um, I've been in here doing a lot of testing over the years. So anytime you see a blue box like this that's filled in, that means that the student has completed that activity. And then you'll see some scores and some lines and maybe some dots over here on the right. And so 
like here I got 100% on this check your understanding. And this line here just means it's not a scorable activity because we don't really give a grade uh, just watching a video, right? So some things are not scored. Okay, so here we are. This, you'll notice these blue lines. We've got the introduction section and why become a citizen and am I eligible? So let's just take a peek. So we've got this lovely welcome video. And so one thing I'll share with you before I play, play this video is that it's probably not advised to play a video during a webinar because the timing might look a little off for you when you see this webinar. The video might be like a little, might look like a weird lip sync job um, just because it's coming across the internet via a webinar. But in real life, the videos, the lips are synced, I promise you. So here's a little welcome video. I'm gonna fast forward it just a bit. Welcome to USA Learns Citizenship. My name is Jean, and I'll be your guide through this course. We're so you'll notice I um, clicked the show text button, and that's because uh, when we were designing this, teachers told us that it would sure be nice if their students could follow along with the script. And so that's what you see here. And you can also hide it. Oh, I lied. It says read text, actually. Okay. All right. So we have our learning goals, and you'll notice lots and lots of listen buttons. There's thousands of audio files inside of USA Learns because listening is such an important thing. And especially for the naturalization interview, when really the whole point of what we're trying to do is prepare our learners to go and have a very important conversation in an official kind of setting, right? So listening is such a key part of that. So let's just listen. In this lesson, you will learn about the reasons to become a U.S. citizen. You will also learn about the requirements for becoming a U.S. citizen. All right. So here we have a reading activity. And here we have a lovely video that we created about 10 reasons to become a citizen. And I'll just play you a little peak of it. I'm going to fast forward do, 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 to the best of my ability to get us to where it's really starting. First, as a U.S. citizen, you have the right to remain in the United States. You cannot be deported. Before I became a U.S. citizen, I worried about changing immigration laws. Now I feel confident that I can stay here for the rest of my life. U.S. citizens can help more family members get legal status in the U.S. and in a shorter time. After I became a citizen, my mom came to live with us from Taiwan. So one thing you probably noticed there was that um, when a parent becomes a U.S. citizen, we put a lot of effort into the accents um, so that students would have an opportunity to hear different voices because one thing I learned from working on this project is that when the, um, the students go for their naturalization interview, a lot of times the officer is him or herself actually from another country. So the officer might have an accent that sounds different than mine or yours. So we wanted to have some real authentic accents in here. Okay, so here's a little check your understanding activity to see if they understood that video that we just watched. So we'll do this one together. Let's see, what are some benefits of becoming a U.S. citizen? All right, what do we think? You can vote, yeah. You can help family members come to the U.S., yeah. Your young children can, be more, can more easily become U.S. citizen, yeah, that's true. You can travel with a U.S. passport. Okay, let's see if I got it right. So I'm gonna click the check button. And yay, I got it right. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, I've got two stars, and that means I got it right on the first try. If I would have not answered correctly on the first try, I would have had another shot at it, but I would have only had one star, and my score would have uh, reflected a less than full credit. Okay. So another thing you'll notice inside USA Learns is lots and lots of vocabulary words. Um, in this course, we call them learn key words. In our, in our other courses, I think we call them learn new words. Um, so lots of imagery, lots of listen buttons. These include the vocabulary word itself, a definition, and a sample sentence. And, and USCIS. Yes. yes, Melinda. 
<laughs> I was trying to get to you before you hit that Don't. listen button. Yeah. Um, can students translate any of the info into their languages for better understanding? Yeah, that's a really great question. You know what? Um, <clears throat> at this time, that is not something that we have, but it is a really great suggestion that comes in at times. But um, I think that they can do things like um, they might. I haven't actually tried this myself, but what do you think, Melinda? Could they? translate some things using some of the Google tools? I'm not sure, actually. Andrea, this, yes. is, this, this is Anthony. Um, hey, I just Anthony. noticed at the bottom of the usalearns.org page, if, mm -hmm. if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it says something about the citizenship videos in three other languages. Yeah. Arabic, so, Spanish, and Tagalog. Yeah, you know, we have a few little, um, like, PSA kinds of um, videos about them, and that is true, and those can be found on our... Um, on our YouTube channel, because we actually we had a nice little project we did with the Cal, with the uh, Butte County Library, and they wanted some multilingual videos. So it was very cool. We were able to make some nice videos about um, learn um, preparing for your citizenship test, and we were able to do those in various languages. But they're really short. They're more like PSAs. Okay, so they're not the actual videos correct. that students are watching. They're just that is um, correct. It's like additional. a PSA. It's like a little little promo kind of thing. Got it. Thank you. But thank you for asking. Okay. So anyway, lots and lots of vocabulary. Okay, but wait, we're not yeah. done yet. <laughs> Ooh, keep asking. Go for it. Uh, closed caption on the videos. Is that yes. available? I believe it is. Okay. So they're on the videos. If there's a CC button, folks, then they click on it and they should get the closed captioning. There's also, Andrea, I believe there's um, a text of the video yeah. up to the a side. lot of the a lot of the videos i'm not sure if this specific course does but i know that um the english courses do i believe have a like show text or read right. text button and when you click that button the text will pop up on the right side so you can read along with it okay is the course the citizenship course or the esl course mm -hmm. are they um smartphone compatible that's an excellent question. Um, I will say they're optimized for computers and tablets because when we originally built this, there was no such thing as internet on phones. Um, and it's definitely something we want to do. Um, I would love to make some improvements to make it better on phones. I think a lot of learners do use it on phones, but it's not the total optimal experience for them. So, you know, they'll have to do like some pinching and zooming and scrolling and stuff like that. But I, I do see in looking at our Google Analytics, a lot of people are doing it on phones. Okay, thank questions? you. Okay, so let's, okay, so let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to show you one of my favorite buttons. This is actually my second favorite button. In a minute, I'll show you my very favorite button. This blue button here, right now it says lesson menu. I'm going to click on it, and it basically it just takes me back one level. No matter where I'm at, it'll take me back a level. Um, okay, so checking out first steps. Okay, so um, if, imagine you want to become a citizen, you're going to have to complete that N-400 form that I talked about, and there will, is a cost involved, um, and you're very likely going to need some legal help, so there's a lot of emphasis in this course about um, we want people to figure out if they need legal help and we want them to get the correct type of legal help because there are a lot of um, dishonest people out there trying to scam applicants and we don't like that. Okay, so, and we want people to be prepared, obviously, and there's lots of ways to study for the naturalization interview. And I'll just share with you a few. Of course, USA Learns, not that I'm biased or anything, but I think that's a good place to learn. And the USCIS website is also a great place to learn. And here's where you guys come in. You can take citizenship and English as a second language classes at your nearby adult school. So thank you all for what you do there. And you can learn at your library. Okay, so we have a lot of information about red flags, and you may or may not be familiar with that is. It's basically, it's a list of questions, and if you answer yes to any of the following questions, that you may need, so you should get some qualified legal help. Um, and we definitely want people to avoid fraud, so let me just show you a bit about avoiding fraud. Doesn't that guy just look like such a scammer? We don't want him to rip us off. Okay. Here's a little video we made about common immigration fraud, and I apologize in advance to anyone from Brooklyn for this little uh, accent we used. 
Okay, here we go. Here's I'll tell you about is called the 10 year green card scam. With this one, the scammer says something like, Look, if you've been in the United States for 10 years or more, you qualify to get a green card. You need to pay me money to apply. If someone tells you this lie, do not give them any money. They cannot apply for you. Only a judge can allow you to stay in the U.S. if you have lived here at least 10 years. It is very hard to get this approval, and it has many requirements. You cannot apply for it unless you are already in immigration court. All right, so there's lots of scams out there, including the disabled child scam and the, the phone scam, and lots of scams, and we want our students to be aware of those. Okay, now let's check out the N400 interview practice. So I'll click on that link. And this is the thing that I think people, teachers in the field tell me, this is really the shining star of the whole course because this is what students cannot find online, as I understand it, anywhere else, especially for free. Um, so we have some, the units here um, are kind of aligned with the, um, the sections of that N400 application. And so um, it's information about you and your contact information, your employment, schools and travel, family relationships, your civic responsibility, memberships and associations, illegal activities and loyalty and the oath. So let's just take a little peek at contact information, why not? Okay, so every, um, every lesson starts with some learning goals and some keywords. Let's check that out. Okay, so you have to put your telephone and email info into that N400 application, so you should know the words, right? What is your daytime phone number? It's the phone number you use during the day. Okay. Evening phone number. Cell phone, you get the idea. Lots of questions about where you live and self-assessment. And at the end of each of the lessons, we have a learning log, which is basically where the learner will say, uh, so I'm supposed to select all the words that I know and the skills that I have after studying this lesson. So, okay, do I know this daytime phone number? Yeah, previous home address, yeah, zip code, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know all these things. So let's say I, let's say I only answered like half of them right. I will hit done and I'll get a message that says, um, you learned a lot, but you should do this lesson again or some, some verbiage like that. So if you get less than 80%, you get the, you should do it again message. Um, and because I was so amazingly clever and I got them all right, it's going to tell me, good job, I learned a lot, and I should continue to the next lesson. So this is a section all about employment, school, and travel. I think the one I want to show you is the one about illegal activities. This is one um, teachers tell me their students really find these kind of juicy, exciting sections. <laughs> like, how do you talk about some illegal activity you might have done years ago or whenever it was? Um, so we have some learn keywords related to criminal records and crimes. Ooh, commit a crime or offense. Have you ever committed a crime or offense? That's a question the interviewer might ask you. Have you ever been arrested? Have you been cited, detained? All these vocabulary words you need to know because the officer can ask you questions about them. And sometimes applicants are just tempted to say, no, 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 when asked, have you ever done X, Y, Z thing? They say no. And the officer, you, you may know this, that the officer can say, oh, really? Well, what does that mean? What is detained? Or what is genocide? Um, and the applicant needs to be able to kind of explain that. Okay, so here's a listening activity. Okay, let's. We're going to select four key words that we hear. Okay, here we go. Have you ever committed, assisted in committing, or attempted to commit a crime or offense for which you were not arrested? Ooh, let's see, I wasn't listening very closely and it's out of order. Ah, I need one more answer. Uh, not arrested. Okay, yeah, yeah, fine. Not arrested. Let's see, did I do it? Yay, I did it. Okay, so wow, lots of great listening activities you'll find in here. Okay, here's one of these stories that teachers tell me their students love. This is Paul's story. 
So let's listen, just a quick listen to Paul's story. Seven years ago, Paul was stopped by the police after he had been drinking at a party. The police took him to the station and he spent the night in jail. He had to pay about $9,000. Okay, the... we won't listen to the whole thing, but there is a question that follows. How will Paul answer this question? Have you ever committed, assisted in committing, or attempted to commit a crime or offense for which you were not arrested? No, I haven't. Yeah, I got it right. Okay, one more of these and then we'll move on. How will Paul answer this question? Have you ever been arrested, cited, or detained by any law enforcement officer, including any immigration official or any official of the U.S. Armed Forces, for any reason? Unfortunately, sir, yes, I have. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's a little sample of that. All right. Andrea, we have a yes. lot of questions coming in about the teacher yeah. side and what the teachers yeah. see. This is hey. really great. Um, Shall we are cruise you gonna on? Be, and, I, yeah, I, I think they're. they're Let's move yes. on to teacher side. Okay. Would you? Would we? Okay. Would we like a little peek at the English courses, or just do you guys want to go straight up to the teacher side? What do you think, Melinda? I'm gonna wait for them. Somebody to type in the chat. Okay. Here we go. Teacher or student, folks? Okay, we got it. ESL. What's our vote, guys? ESL. Okay, so let's show a little bit of the ESL. Let's do and that. Then go to the, the teacher awesome. Side. Let's totally do that. Okay, so I'm going to go to my home and I'm going to pick an ESL course. So let's start with this one here. This is our first English course. So you'll see a unit menu. We have some basic um, some basic instruction about words that one might use in the classroom and numbers and telling time, the calendar, et cetera, et cetera, family, school, clothes. Um, let's look at clothes. There we go. Clothes and colors. And um, let's check out, there's a nice little piece in language practice that is quite nice. Okay, so um, just looking at my notes, conversations. Okay, so the perfect present. So there are these really cute characters in here and this one guy, Miguel, has a crush on a girl. Miguel. Wake up. Miguel. Miguel. What? Oh, oh, sorry. Who are you thinking about? So anyway, these characters are quite adorable and the students really um, kind of look forward to tuning in and seeing what will they do next and how will this little uh, boyfriend, girlfriend situation go. Okay, so let's see here. Click the correct answer. Miguel is thinking about Jane. I believe that is her name. Yay. Okay. So lots of multiple choice questions about the video that they just watched. Um, okay, so that's a little peek. How um, kind of the level and the type of information that is in the first English course. Um, I'm gonna hit unit menu because I know you guys are excited to see the teacher side. So I'm just gonna give you a quick little peek into a couple of these other courses. Um, Sec, oh, let's see, the next one in line is English One Plus. So that's the one, as I mentioned, that is um, based on the Voice of America Let's Learn English piece. So, um, okay, let's go to Unit One. And we have these, we get this gigantic hand out of the way. Um, here in this one, you'll see we've got, what are you doing? Are you busy? Come over to my place. This is my neighborhood. How about this? And then we have the unit review. So just to give you a little sampling, let's check out, are you busy? So <clears throat> Anna um, Mateo, the main character in this story, moved to Washington, D.C. and she just got her first job there. So. She's trying to get, uh, she's trying to learn what her job is. And uh, let me see here, let's watch. So Anna has been going around trying to talk to everybody and she's worried she's been annoying them all. Hi she Anna. Has. Are you busy? <clears throat> Hi Anna. Yes, at 10 a.m. I am writing. Every day I do my morning show. Sorry. Okay, see you later. Okay, so. Hi, Anne. 
Are you busy? Hi, Anna. Yes, at 10 a.m. I am writing. Every day I do my morning show. Sorry. Okay. See you later. Maybe. Maybe I'll see you later. Okay, so the question is, what does Anne do every day at 10 a.m.? I think she, yes, she does her morning show. Okay. So there's a little peek. I won't get into too much of it, but you guys are more than welcome to check out English One Plus. And Andrea, as yeah. you're going through your menu there, um, can teachers use an email address to create an account as a teacher and use the same email address to create an account as a student? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So um, you would need to, if a teacher wants to preview USA Learns to see what it looks like as a student, they totally can do that and that's, that's great. So you'd need to use one email address for your student account and then use a very different, a different email address for your teacher account. Because the, the email address is like your unique identifier. That's how we keep you straight and um, you know, know whose stuff is whose. <laughs> so yeah, great question, Melinda. And it's a question we get quite often. Um, all right, any other questions, Melinda, or shall I continue on? We're good. Okay. All right. So here we are. Let's take a little peek at the second English course. And I am going to click on this lovely select a different unit uh, link because I've been here before. Um, so we have some really wonderful topics such as workers in the workplace, housing and family life, taxes, law and community issues, parenting and workplace roles, and education and information. And today we're gonna to take a little peek inside of parenting and workplace roles. And I um, wanna show you one of my favorite little uh, storylines here. It's about women's work issues. And we've got this lovely character who is getting harassed by her boss, who is really a jerk. So I'm gonna click on this story startup, let's watch link called Despicable These are Behavior. For you. What? Would you like to have dinner with me? No, thank you. Why are you doing this? Martita, you know how I feel about you. I want us to be friends. I want us to be good friends. You are strange, Cornelio. You just tried to fire me the other day. Now you want to be friends? Oh, that. Let's not talk about the past. <laughs> All right, so you get the idea. Yeah, he tried to fire her the other day. All right, so let's do a little comprehension check. So Marta thinks Cornelio is a wonderful human being. I think that is false. And I am correct. One more. The worker's goal is to reach 100 orders per week. Oh, dang, I didn't watch that part of it. Uh, let's see. Oh, I guessed right. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so that's a little peek into the second English course, and I invite you to check it out more on your own later. All right, let's, let's get out of this one. Okay, another English course we have is called Practice English and Reading, and this is the one you might remember I said it's based on real news stories. So we're going to go in there and let's see, um, <laughs> nature, let's see here. Oh, here's my favorite one, Crabs Cause Problems. I think that is such a funny title. Okay, so we've got a basic story. So basically, oh yeah, that guy would cause problems, wouldn't he? Um, this is a basic story that we got from our local news station. And uh, we, we took the story that we got originally and we simplified it to use easier language. And we, this is where we can do some learning Cause. words. And then we click the next button and we can learn all 10 of the words. We have some definitions and spelling and some speaking opportunity. There's a comprehension game. All right, so we're not gonna get into that too much, but you can definitely check it out on your own later. Okay, 
So I think that was a little peek at all of the courses. And while we're in here, I'm going to show you this navigation, these links on the right. We have messages and change my password, change my email address, change my name, enroll in my teacher's class. Remember that one because I'm going to show it to you in a minute and need help. So this is again the student side. And that's the navigation that they have on the right. Okay. Let's pop back to my um, presentation. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, creating a teacher account because I know that's what you guys really want to hear about. So how does one do that? So to make a teacher account, the first thing you want to do is make sure you're at the right website. So usalearns.org slash teacher that's really important. Make sure you're there because you really, really don't want to accidentally do that on the student side and then you'll be entirely confused. So when you arrive here to register, you're going to click on this big red register button. And as you can guess, when you come in next time, you're going to click this blue sign in button. Okay, so this is what the registration page looks like. And I know that's really teeny tiny text and I don't expect you to see that. So I chop the page up and into two to make it um, easier to read for your webinar. And so this is the top part of the registration form. You'll notice you need to add your email address and it needs to be a real email address. Don't put a fake one in there because we will, um, as soon as you complete the registration form, we will send an email to that address and there's a big link in there and in a moment I'll show it to you. You'll need to confirm it. So put a real email address and it needs to be one that is not already used on the student site. And so here's one question that people ask. So, oh, let's imagine I forgot to click that link in that email and confirm my account. And basically what happens is you can't, if you forget your password, you can't use the password reset feature. Um, so anyway, we ask that you please, please confirm your email address. Okay, this is Andrea, the problem. Yeah. I'm sorry, if, um, if students did read, or students, if teachers did register like, oh, let's say six months ago and they forgot, yeah. and then they try and register again yeah. with the same email address, what would happen? Um, I think that if we still have you in our site, if, if that email address is in there, um, it, will, it will say, oh, this email address is already in there, um, use the reset your password feature. And if that doesn't work, you can always email us at help at usalearns.org. So if they do click on that reset your password, uh, they'll get an email to that email address and then they can click the link within that message and then start to use their account I think again. that's how it works I personally yeah. haven't done it in a while but I think that's the deal and we've we've got a few you might want to address that issue you were talking about yeah before everyone came in the room oh yeah I was, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. telling it's Melinda it's coming been, up <laughs> yeah sorry guys it's been interesting the use of our site has skyrocketed like we have maybe four times more people hitting the site than we ever have because everyone's needing to work at home right so if by any chance you have tried to register and you got an email that says this email is already taken my apologies um, we did some troubleshooting yesterday and I think we tracked it down and I think we fixed it there was some weird setting on the server that um, the guys were able to fix um, so hopefully that should be fixed now and if you if it happens to happen to you please email us at help at usalearns.org and we will help you Okay, so this is the second half of that registration form. You'll notice country and agency type, and you're going to pull down to select adult school, most likely. You're going to type in your agency name here and come up with a password that's at least six letters or numbers with no spaces, and then type it exactly the same way again in the confirm password box, and then you're going to hit register. Okay, so um, then really fast, like within 10 minutes or so, I think it's about 10 minutes is what it's set out now and I want to change it to longer, but today it's within 10 minutes. You need to go check that email account that you used when you registered and you will see uh, an email from us with a big old long link in it and we just ask that you please, please click the link um, and that will make your account all official. So please do that. And your students will have to do the same thing when they register. They'll get an email. So that's why it's important that 
you know, the students um, basically do this same process too. Okay, so let's imagine I've registered, I'm in, and now it's time to make my first class. Ooh, this is so exciting. Okay, so there's only really, you're, it's gonna be pretty clear, there's one big button here that says start a new class and you're gonna wanna click on it. And then you're gonna, a little form will pop up and you're gonna type in the title of your class. It might be English 101 or whatever you call it. And then there's a pull down here in this based on course field. There's a pull down menu. You'll click it and you'll see the names of all our courses. Let's say you want you to make a kind of a beginning English class for your students. So you're going to pick first English course, or maybe it's going to be citizenship course, whatever. Um, and then type a little description in this description field and put a start date. And then I'm going to ask, don't put anything in the end date because on that date, your class will end and no one will be able to log in. I actually would like to get rid of the end date, but for now, it's there. Um, and then click the create my class button and then boom, you've got a class. Okay, so this is what my page looks like when I log in with my fake, my awesome fake students. Um, so let's imagine that you're the student and I'm the teacher for a moment, okay? So I want to invite you to my first English course, and I have a class key for each of my courses. So I would give you, the student, this code here. It's an eight, uh, it's like numbers and letters, uh, digit class key. So you give that to your students. Okay, now let's imagine for a minute now. Woo, now I'm a student here. Okay, my teacher gave me the class key. What should I do with it? Oh, I know. I'm going to click on this this link here that says enroll in my teacher's class. So boom. Okay, so I'm still a student. Here's that key my teacher gave me. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna hit enroll and boom, now we are magically connected. So now you as the teacher can see your students' um, activities and monitor their progress. Okay, so I wanted to show you that registration piece inside this presentation instead of trying to do that all live because um, it was just going to be more clunky. So let's, let's just check out the teacher side. Okay, so here I am on the home page. Again, if it's my first time here, I click the register button, I fill out the form. If I'm returning, I hit sign in. I have already, let's see, where's my teacher? I've already logged in. Oh, I lied. Did I? Oh, it's timed me out. Hang on, you get to watch me log in. See if I can get in. Hopefully I can, because I'll be super embarrassing if I can't. Yay, I got in. Okay, so here I am. I have all these fake students because I'm not really a teacher. I'm like a project manager kind of person. Um, so let's just take a little tour of what is here on the teacher side for you. Okay, so we already talked about the start a new class button. That's super easy, no problem. Let's look at one of my classes where I have some students. So in this class, Andrea's demo class, I have two amazing students. So let me click on that. Okay, so here I can do various things. I can view the class roster. I can uh, make a new message. There's the ability for me to um, post a message on my students' homepage, either individually or as a group. There's student activity by class. I can share the class key, which I talked about a bit ago, and I can edit class details. So let's just peek at these. So view class roster. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I've got Fred Flintstone in my class and Andrea Willis in my class. There's their email addresses. Those are the enrollment dates. I can see Andrea's last access date. Fred is really slacking. He has never accessed it at all. I'm gonna have to have a chat with him and both are active. And I can change that. Like, let's say I decide, Fred, you're out of here. Okay, so now he's not active. <laughs> um, so let's see, so that's the class roster. And then there's the class key. There's various ways that you can share that with your students. For example, you could write it on a whiteboard, or you could display this on your projector, but since you guys don't even have your students in your classes right now, that makes it, um, you don't need that option. Um, you can email instructions to students. That might be your best bet right now. Okay, so student email, student email, send the email, boom. Okay, let's get here. Uh, edit details, I can edit my class details. Let's say I want to change the name of my class. I can do that here. 
Ooh, there's my amazing description that I wrote a while ago. So that's how I edit. And let's say I want to delete a class. Wait a minute before you delete it. Be really, really, really sure that you want to delete it because once you delete it, you'll really delete it. Um, and student activity by class. So let's say we want to um, to pull a report, and this is really cool. You'll like this. I'm not actually going to do it right now, um, just in to save time. But I can put a start date and an end date, and I hit generate report, and then I will see a nice report that shows my students' activities by class. Andrea, okay. Yeah. This is Anthony. So just hey, Anthony. on that re on that report. Yeah. Um, what format is the report coming in? Is it a Excel <gasps> spreadsheet? Is it a PDF? What I is think it, it might be Excel. Honestly, let's see because I haven't done it in a while. Um, I it's such a bad um, fake course I have because I don't even really um, my students haven't really done much. Let's see. Let's see what happens, Anthony. I haven't done this in a long time. Okay. So, okay. So here is what shows up on screen. And I can download as a CSV file. And I think I have heard about people copying this part of it because I think actually you would have more students. This is so fake. It's a bad example, right? Um, I've heard of people copying this table and putting it into Excel to do more with it if they wanted to. Okay. And if people don't know or, or they're not familiar with CSV, basically um, it looks very familiar or very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. It's not, it's not exactly an Excel uh, form, but it's very close. But you'll, the data will look like what it typically looks like in an Excel spreadsheet. Thank you, Anthony. That was helpful. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah. Okay. So that is that. Let's see what else we have here that might be amazing to show you. Um, okay. So here up in the navigation bar, we have some instructions. So some tips for teachers on how to create a class, how to manage classes and students, technical requirements, frequently asked questions, some basic info like that. And this resources page is very nice. Um, we've got an overview of USA Learns. We've got curriculum scope and sequence that teachers really like, including the key vocabulary, grammar, and language functions. Um, and we've got this placement quiz. I'll tell you, my team was working really hard on this to get this updated before today <clears throat> because um, the tech, the, uh, it was using Flash and we had to get rid of Flash because Flash is you know, going away. But we have this little placement quiz that you can have your students take to help determine which course they should go in. And so it, there's like about, I did it yesterday testing it. There are about 25 questions. If, if they do well, there's about 25 questions. If they really struggle, I think we stop them at 10. Um, and then it, it generates a recommendation of which course they should go in. Um, and this placement quiz, we need, we need to um, do some updating to it because we built it before the English One Plus course existed. So anyway, so it'll basically say, oh, you should take the first English course or you should take the second English course. And if you think, oh, that maybe it says you should take first English course. You think, oh, I think my students a little has a little more English than that. Then you might want to give a try with the um, English one plus. Uh, let's see. We have some really lovely video scripts for the um, second English course that you can download. And teachers al are always so amazingly creative with making activities out of those types of things. So that's why uh, we made those scripts available for you. This is info about the citizenship course, which we talked about, a little info about our apps, um, and a link to the student site if you need to use that. Andrew, we have a request to please yes. show us the work to do feature. And work I think it was to in the do. Teach, yeah, up at the top there on your screen. Oh, it, disregard this section. You're ah. seeing this because I am a super powerful admin user. She's a super admin, so you don't get Yours that. would look like that. <laughs> but if a student returns a writing assignment. Yeah, let's check this out. So let's say your student does a writing assignment because some of these courses have writing assignments. There's a little thing. I think you would probably see a number or something here to indicate that you have it some writing. A yellow box. There we go. It's been a while since I've used this as, <laughs> as me, the fake teacher. 
Um, so graded writing assignments. So let's see here. Uh, I don't think I have any that need to be done. No grading assignments for me now. But if my amazing students would have submitted some work, I would be able to see that here. I would click on it and I would be able to uh, provide a score. Okay. And then messages. Um, I, let's see here, below is a list of the messages that I have sent in the past 90 days to modify an existing message or change its display status. Click the message title and you can add a new message by going to your My Home page, select the class you want a message and create a new message. So it's not one of the things people ask us is if there's like a total communication feature um, to communicate with your students. And I will say it's a tiny communication feature that we have. It's more, it's not, um, if you want to have major conversations back and forth with your students, probably email or another way is probably going to be your better bet. And okay. Andrea, can yeah. um, students see the graded writing assignment? So once yes, you've graded they can. it, they can see it? Yeah, on their homepage, they'll see a little message that pops up. Um, so they will know that it's been graded, yes. Okay. And we have a question. Um, yeah. If students open an account, mm -hmm. and I'm going to add to the question that was submitted. So Go if students it. open an account because they want to learn English and they yeah. know about the site before the teacher does, yeah. <laughs> and then the teacher creates a class. When the teacher invites the student to the class, mm -hmm. will the teacher see all of the students' scores? I think that their prior work goes with them. Yes. Yeah. I believe that's so how it works. Students can have an independent class mm -hmm. or they can be attached yeah. to a teacher. Yeah. And when a teacher, let's say the teacher, they're done with the teacher's class, the student still keeps all that info. They still keep their score history and their activity history. And so. Andrea, and, can, I, yeah. can I just add, um, I, I'm not sure that you addressed it when you first talked about the uh -huh. kind of the origins of USA Learns. Yeah. But you know, USA Learns essentially was for the student originally, and there was right. no teacher connection to Correct. the student's work. And that's one of the upgrades that you all have done, right? You're trying Absolutely. To, you're trying to really make it more like um, a distance learning environment yeah, where the absolutely. students are working and then the teachers have access to the student work. So this is, exactly. it's still kind of a work in progress, right? Right. And um, I say that because it's, it's kind of a funny project because it has a huge user base, but we have no, f <laughs> so it's kind of a labor of love and um, we're always trying to find grants and things um, to add new features and enhancements because there's a lot of, we have a long wish list of things we would love to do. Um, and it's, it's interesting doing that on a free project with no funding. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So that was a little demo of the teacher side. Um, I'm going to pop back to my PowerPoint here. Okay. So I just want to kind of recap with you all because there's, we get a lot of um, tech support questions from folks because I think sometimes the, like the sequence of events, the order in which teachers are supposed to do things gets a little confusing. So I included this slide just to kind of recap. Okay, so the first thing as a teacher you would want to do is register as a teacher at usalearns.org slash teacher, okay? Then you'll quickly get an email from us you want to go check your email, click on that big long link to confirm your account. And thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Then you're going to log into the teacher site. Then you'll create a class like I showed you. Then if you're ready, you can distribute your class key to the students. But keep in mind, they should already have USA Learns accounts because that's another point of confusion. Um, and then you monitor your students' progress as they complete the work. Andrea, could we go back to the site? Um, yeah, we So that you can see, I think this is in the report, but the question came mm -hmm. up, do you, how can teachers see how much time the student ah, has yeah. spent on? Great idea. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, which one is it? Okay. Let's see. Maybe it's this one. No. No, Andrea, that's, Class that's it because. Is this it? Class think, roster. Class roster. Sorry. I'm not really a teacher. Fred Flintstone. <laughs> I'm not really a teacher. I don't do this very often. Hang on. Let me go. This book. one actually did something. Student gradebook. 
Here we go. There we go. I forgot to show this part. I'm glad you reminded me. Okay, so here we are in the student grade book and we're looking at one student's um, activity in here. So you can see by unit, uh, this student tried 21 times. She is so dedicated. Um, this is the last time she accessed it and she spent a total of 22 minutes and 17 seconds. And why isn't there a score? Yeah, because I think this one's a video and we don't give a score yes. for just watching a video. And learning goals is just reading and we don't give a score for reading. But this one down here is a multiple choice um, comprehension kind of test or activity and this person got 100% on it. So that's why you see some lines. All right, so let me go back. There may be some other things I forgot to show you. I think I got that. I think I got that. I think where I didn't show enough detail was on the, um, the, the detail of like time spent. So I'm glad you asked me about that, Melinda. Was there anything else in, in here that I should show you guys before I go back on to some frequently asked questions we get from teachers and that kind of thing? I think the um, teachers are, they're almost understanding. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> that what would, um, students go need to have an email address. They do. And folks, way back in the day, um, I used to do support for USA Learn. She was amazing. I, well, I, it was okay. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> I was okay. I was okay. <laughs> but back in the day, um, we didn't require students to have email addresses, and it caused a lot oh. of problems. Yeah. Um, just so many that you, we, I can't even begin to tell you. So in order to mitigate the problems, including the security issues that we have yeah. started, are that, that we have to implement now yeah, um yeah. they need to have an email address yeah if they have a smartphone they do have an email address they might not know what it is but they have one yeah and if they don't have one we're going to be having some webinars coming up on how students can create just real simple uh, how to create an email address for a student I whether love using that, email or yahoo or whatever just click 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 so you can, we'll record the video and then you'll Ooh. have that. Can you give it to me? I'll put it on the site. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I know, I'm serious. I want it. So, um, but they need to have an email address. Yep. So Thank you. I Thank you. That it's very true. five questions there. Thank you. Yeah, I know. It's a super common question we get. And I totally understand it's not easy when a student shows up in your class, they don't speak English very well. Maybe their technical skills are not very good. And there you are saying, make an email address. And there is a lot to it. It sounds easy for me sitting here in my chair, but I know for you in your chair, it is, can be difficult. Um, okay, so here we are on a slide about, it's a little recap for students. These are their steps for getting started with USA Learns. So as Melinda mentioned, number one, they should have a real email address that they can check within 10 minutes of registering. And then the student would go to usalearns.org and they would click that big red start now button to register. After they register, they go and they check their email, they go to their email account and they find that email from us and they click that big long link in it. Then they log in to usalearns.org and there, yay, they'll be on their my homepage and they can start learning. Um, if you've already given them a class key, they can enter that in there on the right like I showed you and ta-da, they can start studying their lessons. So that's the student kind of sequence of events that can be a little tricky sometimes. Okay, so a few questions that come in frequently. Do my students need an email address to register? And we've talked about that a few times, yes. And we totally get it. We know it's challenging. Um, in chatting with various teachers in the field, when I've asked them, well, my goodness, what should I tell people when they call asking about this or when they email us? Um, you know, they say, well, you know, it really is a necessary Liter it's a necessary digital literacy skill. I mean, when applicants go to apply, for example, to be a US citizen, you gotta have an email address. So it, I know it's hard, but it's, it would be lovely if they can all have one. Okay, another one. Do my students need to confirm their account too? And the answer is yes, and we've talked about that. Okay, here's a frequently asked question. How can I, a teacher, preview the courses as a student? Okay, so you can, Create a student account at usalearns.org. The only tricky thing is you need to use a different email address than your teacher account, okay? 
Andrea? Yes. Sorry, just one of the questions in, yeah. in the Q&A and maybe this. So what exactly happens if you miss that 10 minute window yeah. for then yeah. what do you have to do That's either a as a teacher or student? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So basically what happens is if you forget your password, you, you won't be able to use the reset your password feature. So you have to email us and at help at usalearns.org. And it's just kind of a pain for you. And it might take us, you know, a day or so to get to you. So it's just better if you can just do it and then you can independently, you know, uh, reset your password because, you know, half the people forget it. <laughs> and that would go for teachers as, oh, sorry, yeah. for students it's, as well, mm -hmm, for exactly. everyone. For okay. everyone. It's okay. for everyone. Thank you. That's a great question. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> one thing you'll notice when you're inside USA Learns that there are some ads in there. And I held off for years and years on putting any ads in there because I just, it was kind of, I just wasn't something I really wanted to do. But it came to a point where I was, I had a choice. I was going to have to shut down USA Learns because we could not afford to keep doing it for free because there are a lot of real costs, server hosting, uh, programmers, tech support people, new course development, you know. Um, so anyway, that's why the ads, and we try really hard to keep them like unobtrusive. We don't want them to be obnoxious in your face. Um, I would bet you've probably been to some websites, some educational websites where you're looking at it and you can't tell if the thing you're looking at is an ad or if it's supposed to be learning content. So we try really hard to keep it out of the way down at the bottom or on the far right. Um, but those ads are what let us keep this site alive. So thank you for your patience with the ads. Okay, what devices can students use? And as I mentioned earlier, the site is optimized for computers and tablets. If you know, if you have a rich uncle or you know somebody who wants to give us a grant, we're definitely looking for some funding to make the site more mobile friendly and do a bunch of other upgrades also. Oh, so this is some bad news, kind of, I wanted to share with you guys. So you might be familiar with our USA Learns English apps, which they're lovely. Um, they don't actually connect to the website in any way. But as you've probably heard, Flash is really, really going away here, probably by the end of the calendar year. And so when Flash is no longer supported, we're going to have to, at least for a while, until I have some means of um, redoing those, those apps will be retired. And I'm not happy about that news, but I, needed, I wanted to share that with you while I had you here. Uh, let's see, what resources are there to help teachers get started? And we actually looked at this page a bit ago. It's that resources page for teachers. Where we've got the scope and sequence and the, uh, the link to the assessment and all that stuff. Oh, how many courses can I make? Well, you can make as many as you want and we hope you enjoy them. But don't. I'm sorry, I remember this from way back a long time ago. Don't make a million of them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're not going to use them. It's kind of like, like when you go to the buffet, you know, only take as much as you can actually eat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't, leave it, don't leave any on your plate, please. Yes. Andrea, yeah. But I think um, some people do have um, technical questions, so mm -hmm. there, there's still a little bit of confusion. Mm -hmm. So students, like if I'm one student, mm -hmm. I theoretically could enroll in your level one, level one plus, level yeah. two, level three. I could enroll in all the courses, right? Yes, yes. I'm not limited to just that like one course, for That's example, That's true. Right? But I think you can only be in like one first English course. I don't think you can, if one teacher already has you in their first English course, you can't be in multiple teachers, same course, right. basically. Okay. okay. So that's one little, one little yeah. nuance. Right. I mean, if the student independently um, on their own, like on the student side, they mm -hmm. could enroll in all the courses, right? They yeah. could be doing absolutely one, one plus two, three absolutely. citizenship all at the same time. There's yeah. no, there's I don't no think there's limit. any human being that could actually do that. But, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but they could. Yeah. So. Theoretically, they could. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and um, teachers, when they create, I'm sorry, we keep interrupting. Oh, I'm glad you are when because it, I want to answer everyone's questions and I don't know what they are. <laughs> when a teacher creates an account, mm -hmm. they can create as many classes as they want. They're yep. using the exact same email address. So don't mm -hmm. think that you have to have a different email address uh, for every class that you create. That is true. You can have five classes based on the first English course. You can have eight classes based on the citizenship course. Yeah. 
as long as you have more than one student in each class. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so um, th we're, um, we've got some other questions here. Go ahead. So, the placement test. There is yeah. a placement test that Andrea showed. Uh, it's very simple. And actually, the teachers have more knowledge of their mm -hmm. students. Absolutely. So use it with a grain of salt. That's right. You know them better than we do. Uh, when I log in as a teacher, can I see the activity menu? Um, when you log in as a teacher, you cannot see the activity menu. Um, that is when you're going to want to go to usalearns.org, which is the learner site, and you're going to want to make yourself a student account so that you can see what your students would ultimately see. And that is when you're going to need a different email address than your teacher email address. Right. So, so be two, two different people. Yeah, be two be different a people. And a teacher. Um, can you pick and choose what activities you can do in USA Learn Citizenship? Um, we don't really have mechanisms in place for the teacher to say, oh, I want my students to do this one and this one and this one, but not this one. Um, it would be more a kind of a communication thing between you and your students, and, and you would tell them which ones you want them to do. Okay. And uh, do you have certificates of completion to download? Oh. I already know the answer, but you go ahead. Yes, yes, that is actually, I'm so glad someone asked that. Um, we do not, and it's definitely something we have thought long and hard about because it sounds really great in concept. And then when it comes down to it, our um, kind of our advisors thought that we should not do that because students, if they printed something, they would think it was all official, like, yay, I just got a college diploma or something. Um, and it's really not that official. But I do tell people if the student wants, um, you know, the students could go in and print their unit menu page, which shows complete, complete, complete. You remember all those blue boxes I showed you and their scores? If somebody wanted something, they could print that. Um, it's not as official as some kind of certificate, though. All right, any more questions bubbling there? Or um, I? We have somebody referencing uh, the PETW Moodle that OTAN houses. Ah. I'm just going to address that real quick. Please do. Um, putting English to Work, some of the videos are in USA Learns, and the Putting English to Work videos that are on the Moodle are different. Uh, there are activities on the Moodle. Uh, Karen Lang is the one that uh, had the question, and she says that USA Learn seems easier for students to use. Thank you. It, it, I, I would agree, <laughs> but I also know that students are familiar with Moodle, and they think that that's easy too. So try one, and if you're not getting the results you need or want, then try the, try other. the other one. Exactly. So find what fits you and your students. Yep, that's good advice, Melinda. And I will, can I just add, um, Please, so yeah. Moodle as a learning management system also gives you the ability to customize the Moodle course. Yes. So if you did want to add like other materials, you know, in addition to what's already there, and it's already, it's pretty rich as it is, but if you wanted to add some more activities or whatever, you have the ability to do that in Moodle, but in the USA Learns, Andrea, you basically, what you see is what you get, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. All Can right. Teachers create their own certificates of completion without violating any USA Learns guidelines. Sure, have at it. There you go. I guess we would put some disclaimer like between us. This certificate is not endorsed by the USA Learns, the Sacramento County Office of Education. <laughs> you could if you want to, but it wouldn't be very official or anything. Well, like would they? Would it be okay <clears throat> for them to use the logo or not? Um. Probably yeah, not. Probably not. I mean, I would no. like to say yes, but if the attorney were sitting here, she'd probably say no. Yeah. So. Andrea? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, there was another question. It hasn't made its way over to the yeah. Q&A. It was in the chat. Okay. So someone said that the citizenship course mm -hmm. cannot be accessed by phone or a mobile device. Is that true <clears throat> or not true? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not sure that it's true entirely. I do know, as I keep saying, the site is not optimized. None of the courses are optimized for phones. Um, I'm not aware of the citizenship uh, course specifically being um, any, you know, different than the others. I do know the students need to like pinch and scroll and stuff. And I have heard too that some of the time tracking may not work perfectly on phones. Um, but I'm not sure, I'm not aware of the citizenship course being really any different than any of the other ones. 
but it's definitely somewhere where that's, that's the, my main goal in life is to find, get a grant or something to, to get it more optimized for phones. Because I know a lot of our learners only have phones. Um, and Andrea, so actually Jamie asked a question. I'm not sure if you yeah. addressed it or not. And what I think that? I finally understand what the question is. Oh, okay, what is it? So, okay, so let's say for example, a, stu a student finishes one of the courses. Let's yeah. say that they start, or they start and finish the level one course. Okay. Okay, so you know theoretically they are ready for you know one B or two, mm -hmm. but is there some kind of procedure that gets them into the next course because they finished the previous course? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I've gone to that very last activity in a course to see. It might automatically take you to the next course that's in sequence. Um, or it might just take you to the my home page, which has a list of all the courses. And so it might be a good opportunity. It, mm -hmm. it ahead, does Melinda. both. I think so. Yeah, At it the might. And they're, they're prompted yeah. to go to the next course. I think that's true. I think that's true. So it might be worth having some kind of communication to your students. Hey, if you're getting toward the end of first English course, the next one you want to do is English one plus or if you're you know if you're ending with English one plus go to second English course I think it does automatically take you to the next one but it would be good for them to know what they should be in um, so let's say okay so let's say a student is enrolled in Anthony's teacher you know or sorry Anthony's English one course yeah. or level one course sorry okay. but as a teacher I don't have a one plus or a two set up yet Oh, so then so, what happens to the student? Because there, there isn't really a yeah, course that's a great for them question. to go to. So yeah, that's probably, a great question. So yeah. I think what, would, what you do is you would need to, on the teacher side, you would need to go make your, let's say it's English 1 plus or whatever course, right? The, the second one in order. So you as a teacher would make that. Then you would give your student that class key. And the student would need to plop your class key into their my home page so you would be connected for that course too because you don't just magically stay connected through the whole sequence oh that's a great question no one ever asked me that before well we can thank jamie for that question thank you thank jamie. jamie that was an awesome <laughs> question i never never would have thought of that thank and, you um so andrea another question about yeah. um so for example let's say um so fatima was asking she has a google classroom set up Okay. So what would be the what would be your recommendation in terms of like linking these two or is it is there is there any way for USA learns to integrate with anything else that's out there? Ooh, no. that's a really great question. The answer is no. <laughs> um, it would be a matter of just like linking to our homepage and then having um, students log in there. But I will tell you one thing that's also on my very long wish list is the ability for teachers to link students to certain pages, but it's kind of like a very long wish list. Okay, and Andrea, FYI, so just another comment about that mm -hmm. citizenship course. Mm -hmm. So Sherry was saying citizenship course can be used by phone. However, mm -hmm. some of the speaking activities don't work. Uh, yeah, I'm not terribly surprised. The other thing I noticed was um, on some of the writing activities, this is so quirky, you know how different devices just behave differently, right? I noticed on the writing activities where they're like, let's say you listen to the word, the phrase and it says the United States and you're supposed to type that or no, maybe it has to be something with an apostrophe, whatever. The apostrophe for whatever reason, the phone does not perceive it, doesn't communicate, doesn't play nicely with USA Learns anytime it wants to type an apostrophe, go figure, right? Yeah, so the phone, it's not optimized for phones. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, any, any more questions coming in, guys? We're kind of running out of time, so. Okay, good. I'm almost done, so this is going to work out cool. great. I have my timer set. According to my timer, I have 57 seconds left. Um, let's see, we've already kind of talked about how to communicate with your, oh, actually, let me turn this off because it's going to start um cancel my timer okay so oh we talked about this already what class should my students take that's where you would use that placement quiz we talked about who can i contact if i need help help at usalearns.org is the place to email and please please include as many details as you can so we can help you um, if you say my student can't log in okay well 
that's not enough information for us to try to figure out what's up with your student, right? So include your student's email address, their name, whatever you can. Anytime you can take a screenshot, like take a picture of the problem, send us that. That will help us so much and enable us to help you faster. Um, so this is just a question for y'all to ponder. You don't have to type anything into the chat or anything unless you want to, but I'm just hoping that after you've seen my presentation, I'm hoping you have been pondering, you know, how might you use this at a distance with your students? And Andrea, I'm going yeah. to ask you to go back to the site because I think there's one area okay. um, that some folks missed that they were asking about. Okay. Would you like the teacher the, side or the? Yes, the teacher side Let's on do the that. resources. Okay. So there's a bunch of information here yep. on the resources site, and this is where the placement test is. But if you scroll back up and go to instructions, that is so cool. Oh, good. On Let's the go instructions, there. you have how to create a class and how to manage classes. So That's if right. there were some um, questions in the chat about how can we show this to our ESL teachers? How yeah. can we show them everything? Take them here. That's a great idea. Really good <clears throat> little tutorials that good. will help the teacher. Good. That's great. Good I think tip. some folks missed that. Good. Okay. Well, good. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. And I think I'm almost done. Hang on. Let's see how close to done I am. Oh, oh just some exciting scoop. Um, <clears throat> my team is in the process now of creating another new course. Uh, we're going to call it Access America, and it will help immigrants integrate into U.S. society. We'll cover civic, linguistic, economic, and local integration, and we're building it with content partnership with USCIS. And I think we're almost done. And Now's your chance. Help at usalearns.org. Yes. Yeah. Help at usalearns.org. If you want help, that is the place to go. And I have two people that are keeping a very close eye on Don't it. Don't email Andrea. Don't email help. <laughs> hide, hide this one. Imagine you don't see this one unless you just want to drop me a note and say hi and that was a great presentation. <clears throat> but don't email me for tech support. I'm not the best person to help with the there details. You go. <laughs> Andrea, yes. on, that, on that Access America course you're working yeah. at, the question was about uh, what level, what English level? I believe intermediate. Okay, so something, so kind of similar to the citizenship Probably course that's already there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if my if my um, ESL teacher writer friend was here, she could tell us in more detail what level. But I think, yeah, I think about the level of the, the uh, maybe even a little lower than the citizenship course, I would think. Okay. But right in that zone. <clears throat>